Do not scratch your eyes. Hello and welcome to the Do Not Scratch Your Eyes podcast. <laughs> Joining us for the opposition view this time round, more professional than these two, is Chad from the Red Half of Sheffield <laughs> podcast. Uh, how are you, Chad? Oh, I'm not. I'm not too bad, Justin. And uh, thanks for having me on, guys. I mean, I said it before we started recording. You guys are my favorite podcast team trio. We haven't paid him for this, by the way. And no, the money, the money is somewhere across the Atlantic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's, some, it's somewhere lost in the ocean. But no, you guys are my favorite podcast to come on. And I, I wish. You know, aside from the two times that we play you guys a season, it's like I kept looking at the the schedule. And was like, when is Watford coming up? When is Watford coming up? I want to be on the Do Not Scratch Your Eyes podcast. You guys are the best best around. You you have fun. You let loose. I mean, it's. It, I don't know. I don't know what to say. Thanks for having me on again, guys. That's you pleasure. are welcome, sir. Pleasure. You are welcome. Yeah. And don't forget, if you are also deranged and on another podcast, we'll let you come on and say things about us like that as well, too. <laughs> right, here we are. We are looking forward to playing uh, the reverse of the first game of the season. We got a 1-0 win uh, against Sheffield United on the first game. But since then, you've had a, a good season, but a bit of a blip at the moment. But we will be going into that. But the first things first, Chad is here, which basically means that you're our absolute favourite since the last time West Brom didn't turn up. Ooh, but, to them. yes. However, we were, when we get to the prediction league, we were absolutely pulled out of the barrel. Uh, and, and we're going to have this as a regular feature now. So at some point during the video, you might want to play. Where's <laughs> Ted? <laughs> right. I didn't know this was coming. He if just... you get to spot, where's I Kev? I didn't know this was happening. At any point. It, this is going to be it. Who knows? Oh, you don't know the, the tension. Who knows? Who knows when or where Kev might I love appear? That. I there we are. Him that. He's messaged me the other day saying, You've done me dirty there, mate. You've done me wrong. Oh, he's still talking to me. Yeah, he's still talking to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Who said oh, you that? Kev. <laughs> <laughs> I can't get that. You've got to send that to me. That's amazing. I love it. Anyway. Anyway, anyway, so keep 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 them peeled. See if you spot it. In the meantime, we're going to start with our review of Sheffield United. This time with extra extra added content about the opposition because we knew fuck all about West Brom. So here we go. We're going to take a look at <laughs> Sheffield United, and Chad is on hand to talk uh, to talk to us about it. We're going to start with your home and away record here, Chad. So this these are the stats for uh, for the Blades. Impressive. At home, at home, you have been very, very impressive. Two point oh six points per game is nothing to be sneezed at, and you're looking at, you know, kind of two goals a game, conceding one goal a game. We know what that means. It means you're going to win two one. Who could have predicted that earlier? Anyway, um, that's looking pretty good, and your points away from home are not to be sneezed at either. When we took a look at this uh, last time with West Brom, because. Boy, were we filling for time. Um, we did actually bring up the fact that, you know, when we looked at the whole um, uh, table for both home and away, you were in second place for both of them. Uh, and you, you, so you seem to be, be doing pretty well there. Have you seen a difference between home and away as, as to how Heckingbottom has set up? Or has it just been you just kind of carried on with the same formation all throughout? No, honestly, in, 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 when, since you put those stats on on the screen, I mean it's it's a pretty impressive home record. We have built sort of Fortress Bramble Lane, and and a, away from home, we haven't been the best. But I mean, we've we've still been grinding out results, and you know, to be fair, you you said two points a game, and in just a, a quarter of a point away from two points a game on the road. It's a pretty impressive season, although, you know, we say Fortress Bramall Lane, then the Middlesbrough come in and stuff us 3 0 or 3 1. Although, albeit, we played, if we play like we did against Middlesbrough, we'll probably be okay. And then we go away from home and Millwall, you know, the, the scoreline is not indicative of how good Millwall were. We were second best in the first half. Better in the second half. As 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 soon as we get the second goal, then they go the other end, and Bradshaw caps off his hat trick, and it's like, 
we called our way all the way back in this game to just give it away in the snap of, uh, of your fingers, and it's 3-2, and it's game over. We suffer back-to-back losses for only the second time under Paul Heckingbottom. We are ripe for the taking. It's a little bit of a blip. We should be able to get the ship righted. We, we know what the story of the season has been. You and Burnley have got away from the rest of us, and fair play to you. But this wobble that we're talking about, and and it's fair to say Middlesbrough's rise has really kind of caused it to, to, to be an issue for you there. And we, a, a lot of people would have seen the Middlesbrough game. But we also, you know, we've caught a cold against against Millwall they can turn anybody over on a given day I think uh, you know I'm, I'm quite surprised when I see Millwall actually have a funny kind of non-event of a, a of a performance and why they're not actually stronger because when they turn up they can really really turn up how are the fans at the moment in terms of Heckingbottom because you're just having this wobble is everybody sitting comfortably and we know where we are, or are we all just looking over our shoulder at uh, at the uh, at the Middlesbrough crew coming in? It's a bit of a split fan base. You know, if you would have been on the internet yesterday after full time whistle blows, you know, we had the we had the early kickoff, so we were on we were on display for everybody waiting for the the, the three p.m. kickoffs. The fan base got split down the middle, honestly, and, and I would I wouldn't even say down the middle. I would say more of the the, the fan base is saying, oh, God, here's the wobble. Here comes Middlesbrough. The, the lead's down to four points, albeit we have a game in hand, which if we were to win that game, the the, the deficit would, would balloon to seven. I think the fan base is a little bit of sp- split. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm usually pessimistic in saying, oh, God, you know, we're going to throw this away. But, I mean, to be fair – We've got, what, 15, 14 games left in the season? We've still got plenty of games left to right the ship, you know? If we have a the big big thing, we haven't played this amount of teams that are up, in our, up near the top of the table in a cluster all season. We've kind of played Norwich here, Burnley here, Watford at the beginning of the season, Middlesbrough, you know, it, it, it hasn't been in like one type of murderer's row. And that's what we're staring down. Now we've got two defeats, Burrow, Millwall, you guys Saturday. You know, if we drop points against you guys, everybody's going to be like, sack the manager. The team's going to go into administration. We're going to go out of business. We're going to be in the National League down there with our friends, Wrexham, who I hope stay there forever. <laughs> you know, just, you know, they're going to go completely from zero to 100 and say, oh, my God, we're going to we're not even going to make the playoffs. We're going to finish. We might get relegated this season. But it's that type of fan base when you start off so good this season and build such a lead and then you just feel it slip and you feel it like almost slip through your fingers right now. But I think if we can get the ship righted and navigate ourselves to get a draw or a, a win Against you guys, I think it'll calm everybody back down and be like, okay, it's not as bad as everybody presumed it was going to be. Fair enough, fair enough. So it's fair to say that with your cup exploits, welcome to Wrexham isn't on every Sheffield United fans kind of uh, no viewing now this. You've done it. Now you've done it. No, <laughs> no, no. You want you guys want to hear a rant? Oh, Did I God. say something? <laughs> oh no! You're just you're 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 turning the screw into the diluted fan base that is Wrexham AFC. And Tom from th- that podcast came on our podcast, Red Half of Sheffield, and, and gave his inputs into what he thought was going to happen in that tie. And you know, he he thought he was going to be a great tie. Blah blah blah. Finishes three three. Mil- or Wrexham were were the better side in the second half. Deserved to win. We mm-hmm. got the last gas winner. Return fixture Wrexham. You would have thought they were competing with Man City and Arsenal for the top of the Prem. I didn't know they were that high up. <laughs> but then then the, the reverse fixture happens, and the officials, the commentaries, especially over here in the States, they wanted Wrexham to win. Hands down, the most biased commentary I've I've ever watched in my life. Um, glad glad we glad we came away with the, the, the win and we did the little we see you because Wrexham did that when they got drawn against Tottenham and they, 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 yeah, we know that wasn't at, at the race course ground. It was almost a little bit of here. You can have your little, I don't know, your arrogance. Here you go. You can have it on a plate and eat it and be happy with it. 
and stay down in the National League, and I hope they never get promoted out of that league. And then their owners have to sell the club, and they stay down there forever um, because that is the most <laughs> – you're a big deluded fan, fan base. You're a big fan, aren't you? Deluded fan base I've ever, you know, because <laughs> I mean, a, a lot of your your viewers are going to be over in, in England, and you know, welcome to Wrexham. They capture the hearts of the American fan base. Oh my God, this underdog story. Oh my God, it's the greatest team in the history of the world. You're the fifth tier of English football. Fifth tier. You lost. What was the final of their their playoff semifinal? Five four. You lost. You didn't get promoted. Oh, my God, we're going to have season two. So let's pump more money into this club. Let's get them up. And now everybody and their brother walking around on the streets have a have a Wrexham shirt. Oh, my God, Wrexham. I, we, we talked – we were in a Twitter space after that game, and they said within five to seven years, Wrexham are going to be in the prem. I said I, – I didn't say it because I didn't want to hurt their feelings. But I'm like, I just wanted to say you guys are the most diluted fan base in the entire world. You'll probably be in League Two for the next five years, aka Selford City. The 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 the, the, not the ninety-two group, they can't even get you out of League Two. They can't even get you out of League Two, and they've got all kinds of money. You guys are diluted. Come on. What What's going have on? You done here, Peter. <laughs> that is a that is, to, to say we were to, for for the Wrexham fans to say oh dad, he put Deadpool is dead. Deadpool is dead. He it lost says here. He lost at Brownwell Lane 3-1. Hold on. It says here on the instructions, find Sheffield United fan, ask about Wrexham, retire to safe distance. Who knew? Anyway. <laughs> there we go. And then, and then for their fan base. He's off again. <laughs> and, 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 you know, you know, I don't I don't interact with social media because everybody are keyboard warriors behind the behind the computer. But for, for a fan base to say a fan base of Wrexham to say we are rattled with Billy Sharp's post game comments and and all that, and then he gets charged by the FA for saying for speaking his mind and saying like they were making this more than what it was and all that, and then he gets charged by the FA. Piss off, in my opinion. I I don't <laughs> care. I I could care less what Wrexham do. And, and it, it's a great story. They're they're owned by American American owners. I get that. But they're also trying to capture the American market as Chelsea are, as Man City are, as Man United, Arsenal, Tottenham, Liverpool. All those teams are trying to capture the American market. And this little 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 team in 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 Wales are trying to capture the hearts of millions in the fifth in, year. In, in fairness, we are also trying to conquer the American market. Um, two Americans at a time. Uh, Carlos is head of that particular project. <laughs> it inv involves, it involves them coming on our podcast, us, us basically asking if they're going to come. They turn up two weeks later, and then Carl gets them mind-blowingly drunk. It's yes. a great scheme. Well, Chad, Chad, <laughs> Chad would have been the first one of that. Yes. yes. I would have. Yes, I yeah, would have. Yeah. And, and, and to this day, it kills me that I didn't meet up with Carl at Vicarage Road against Burnley at the beginning of the season. You would have had a hangover the next day, my friend. That's, oh, that's, that's fine. Awesome. I would have been going back to the States anyway with a hangover. I would have slept the entire way. <laughs> right, right. Anyway, anyway, um, a great story I read on there's a there's a uh, an email service that you get. It's called The Upshot, and it comes out on a Friday. And it was a story about Todd Bowley, who now owns uh, part, part, like, part of Chelsea. And he's in with a load of agents, and they're asking him, how are you going to pay this 500 million pounds that you've just invested? And he went, it's easy. We, we qualify for the champions league each year, you know, uh, and, and they pay us hundreds of millions. It's fine. Yeah. But you don't get in that automatically and you won't get into that. You're 10th. And he went, no, no, no. We're, we're in it every year. I'm sure no, we are. And they went, and they went, yeah, but you're 10th and Graham Potter's not having the best time of it. You won't get that this year. No, 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 no. It's fine. Apparently he's then hustled out of the, out the meeting, Bought back in and gone, yes, apparently that actually is the case. I do apologize. <laughs> love it, love Deluded. it, love it. Deluded. That, hey. that is the that is the American, but and I didn't mean to cut you off. That is the American standard over here. We spend as much money as we can because over here it's it, for for owners of franchises in the NFL, the NBA, Major League Baseball, because he he has a, a helping hand in the LA Dodgers. You can spend an endless amount of money, but you'll make that revenue back by by charging fans fifteen dollars for a beer, charging out the out the wazoo for 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 tickets, you know, marketing, social media marketing, 
selling shirts, selling different and sundries of anything marked with the LA Dodgers. It's 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 just a part of the American delusion when they go into this bank. Oh my God, we don't make that money because we don't qualify for that tournament. And I just spent 500 million pounds. What do you mean? The club's going to go bankrupt. Oh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll call our brothers at Barcelona and figure out how they work the system to, uh, to, yeah. to get all their players registered. I, I, I mean, I mean, two things. There is the fact that whenever I've had a chat with guys from America, when I explain relegation and the whole kind of pyramid and the table, they get, first of all, they go, what really? Wow. And then they, you, you, you see the lights come on and they go, Oh wow, that's that's real jeopardy, isn't it? Yes, you know, mm -hmm. and, and and it's not the same thing. The other thing I just need to type in is make mental note new podcast up the wazoo. Excellent, right? Okay, good. <laughs> so so let's go back to let's go back to what we always do on our preview show, which is we tell you who your star man is, and then you tell us bollocks. That's not right. We're going with Illiman and Day, who we didn't see really pull up trees at Watford in that first game. In fact, he missed a bit of a sitter, but he's got 10 goals. He's got seven assists, which puts him at the top of the, the goal contributions. I think McBurney's got one more goal than him so far this season. Is he your star man or are we as ever talking out of what's now known as our wazoos? <laughs> no, I mean, you're, you're, you're spot on. Illuman and Dai has been our best. I mean, he's playing above, Above the championship, I believe Everton were were in for him. A, a whole host of prem prem teams were in in for him in the transfer January transfer window, and yeah, he. I mean, he. If we don't get promoted and the wheels come completely off, he will be playing for probably a team middle of the road in the prem that are secure, if not higher. Yeah, he is an absolute star man for us goals come from him it is really a transformation from last year start of the season we didn't even know who he was we put paul hecking bottom in 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 as our manager and all of a sudden the prince said hey we have to have this illuman and die in the side comes in first game has an influence basically made his name against fulham away from home when he scored an outrageous goal and then it's been almost his stock has risen since that game and he's been the best and most influential player for Blades all season. We got one. We got one finally. <laughs> finally. Happen. Law of averages said. Absolutely. Right. If I throw a hedgehog at a dartboard somewhere, I'm gonna I'm, well, I'm gonna either injure a hedgehog or I'm gonna hit a treble 20. Not sure that metaphor works, but never mind. We're now gonna come on to what we what we like to call one, two, three. Now, this might be interesting. We may go off on a tangent here. <laughs> Kel surprise. Fine. I'm down for it. Excellent. So we look at three players who played for both clubs. And I'm going to ask, first of all, I'm going to ask uh, Justin. Justin, could could you name one of the players that we have currently on screen? Most certainly. Uh, Darius Henderson on the right-hand side there. Darius Henderson sitting there advertising Malta. Malta, you're most welcome. Carlos, could you name another player who is sitting there currently I, on I the mean, screen? I I can. Uh, the one on the left looks like Brenda from the hairdressers down the road. But um, <laughs> the one in the middle is definitely Mr. Robert Page. Mr. Robert Page in the middle. Sorry, Brenda, if you're watching. Uh, so we have to turn to Chad and say, Chad, no, can you no can way. you name can you name the legend no on the left? No way. No. Nope. That's way before my time. No. Oh. Oh, great stuff. I'm really, 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 really happy. In that case, you have to. I'm not even going to tell you who it is. And then I'm going to tell you whether or not you're right or wrong. I love a bit of power. I go mad for it. So what we do with these three players, with, the, with these three players, is you guys, uh, Justin, Carl, you have to agree between you. Bearing in mind, you don't even know who one of them is, which I like very, well, I very might. much indeed. I might. Ah, oh, OK. All right. I'm OK. Not, no. All right. We'll see. And then we'll go through and see. You have to decide one, two and three. As to the leg, the size or, and the quality of the legacy at, in your case, Chad, the Blades, in our case, obviously at Watford, the Hornet. So let's start with Chad. Chad, of the players there on screen, Robert Page, he did uh, he did a lot for you guys. He played uh, 215 games at the Hornets, including picking up the uh, the, the championship playoff uh <clears throat> a trophy for us. He captained, but didn't manage to get you the win in the same game there. And 107 games for Blades. There's Robert Page there. There's also 
Darius Henderson, 105 games for, for the Hornets, 72 for the Blades, but a, a good scoring rate for both of those. And then the mystery player. Who would you say one, two, and three? Chad. Oh, three, three with a hair on the end. Three, three, two, one, three, two, one on the screen. I'll go so, in, 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 or, in order. Three, two, in one. In order. So we're saying number three is there. Justin, do you have any idea who, who the suit player might be? You don't. Well, I just Googled who I thought it was and it isn't. So uh, I'm. <laughs> who did you think it was? Who did you think it was? I thought it might have been Keith Mercer, but he never played for Sheffield United. Oh, no, um, no, 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 no. So mystery man on the left is third in, in the list. Because uh, A, I don't know who he is, and B, he can't be as big as the other two, I'm guessing. Although at the end of this, you're going to go, oh, he's only one of our best players ever, presumably. Um, I'm not going to say that to you. Right. <laughs> Carry on. Second in that list would be Hendo. I mean, he was a fantastic player for us in the 2005-2006 season. Wasn't that great the following season, but he was kind of left on his own because uh, Marlon was injured. But yeah, I've got fond memories of Hendo. Uh, and first, of course, Robert Page, Graham Taylor, uh, legend, if you like, played for us in two promotions, uh, lifted the trophy at Wembley, which we've had a, a hold of, let's not forget. So for me, that's going to be Mystery Man, then Hendo, then Pagey. Well, I'm going to I'm going to show you the stats of the name and then I'm going to watch Chad go, oh, shit, right? The third player... Oh, played. am I not getting a go with this then? Oh, am yeah, I... no, 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 go for it. Do you know oh, who right. it might be? Do you know who it might be? No, oh, Carl's got, got it now. Come on, Carlos. Well, I, no, I don't know. I haven't got a pissing clue. <laughs> <laughs> no, idea. no idea who that is. The third player is none other than Tony Curry. Tony I knew Curry. it. I knew it. I was like, yeah, oh, man, that's a weird picture. One. That is a weird picture because it, it kept popping in my head. I was like, man, that might be Tony Curry. Yeah. Yeah, now, so I was right. Three, two, one. Yeah. Three, two. Oh, you're, you're doing it in reverse order there. I, yeah. I like what you're doing there. Well done. Well done. If you don't win, change the rules. Well done. Okay. So <laughs> to, to, Tony Curry there, uh, he only played for Watford when we played in black and white. He played 18 games in the, <laughs> in the 68, 69 season. Sorry, 67, 68 season. Sorry. And he absolutely lit the place up. He scored six goals inside of his first four games as, an, as a 17 year old. I mean, he was like, um, for, for those who remember Bruce Dyer, who we sold as the most expensive teenager, he was kind of the equivalent. He came in, he played for a short time, and then uh, and then a certain team from, uh, from Yorkshire came in and took him. And he was voted in 2014 Sheffield United's player of all time with uh, 313 appearances, and he scored 54 goals, Mr. Mr. Tony Curry. Now, what we're going to do, normally we would take a look at things and, and look at some some previous um, footage of games between the two. But instead, I wanted to go for the fact that, you know, Tony Curry was such a player. What we're actually looking here is we're trying to basically see if we can't actually get you to pay up really what, uh, what Tony Curry is worth in today's market and see if we can approximate that. In a show we're now calling He's One of Our Own. That's right. We're after we're after rebate on the money that we didn't make when we sold him to you for £26,500 in 1967. Wow. Wow. So he came in, he says, as I said earlier on, he played for us did superbly well and literally within within half a season he was on his way to Sheffield United um he played in some you know when he left us he was clean cut and you know look what you did to him in the 70s he was he, was, <laughs> he grew his hair out absolutely he was <laughs> he was one of those players who was um he was up there with uh, uh, some people will know these names Rodney Marsh, Stan Bowles, the kind of maverick players, almost almost a sort of player, almost Glenn Hoddle-esque before Glenn Hoddle, but actually with a bit of character rather than, uh, you know, what he had. He played, uh, he played 17 times for England, including in what has to be the best English kit of all time, as far as I'm concerned there. It, you know, the old red, white and blue on that oh, classic. There he is playing in 1970, uh, 1976, I think it was, against Brazil. And what a player he was. He is such a legend at Sheffield United that I believe it is still known as the Tony yep. Curry stand. Yep. So, you know, that's, you know, he is absolutely there. Um, uh, other great kits that were available and Crystal Palace, you think you've got something on people? Crystal Palace? No. Diagonal kits were oh, there. Kev. And Kev. 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 Oh, what's gone wrong? What's gone wrong? <laughs> what's going on? Oh, te slight technical difficulties. Nothing to see here. Nothing to see here. Anyway, what we're saying, Tony Curry. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. There we go. <laughs> Tony Curry was there, but I thought, what should we do? 
I know what we'll do. Let's have a little look at some of what Tony Curry was able to bring. There he is. He's only Cahoon is coming in. Curry. A real midfielder, but an attacking midfielder. Now, this isn't the greatest game ago, but if you look at this player here, he's about oh. 104. <laughs> Football in the 70s was great. We'll, we'll get to see Grandad again in just a second. Hold on, here it goes. Here he comes. Here's Grandad. There he is. There he goes. There's Grandad. <laughs> now, this, this has echoes of Zlatan Ibrahimovic for me. See ya. See ya. Bottom corner. Oh, he was a good player, wasn't he? Oh, yeah. oh, I love the pixelated picture on this one. Oh yeah, well this is this is in Wales. That's why. <laughs> yeah, um, of course. This is, this is poss that's Wrexham's latest stand being built there. Obviously, <laughs> we don't just throw this together. Oh no, we do. We just throw this together, don't we? Oh, my God. He did go to Leeds United after. Yeah, uh, yeah. But he could still finish. And in the in the seventies, we just had highlights on the TV. That was not, and this was one of those most famous goals because this was a you know the balls were still heavy and curling them was not easy you had to be a player to do it properly he milked the applause there he does indeed they go a replay and it's worth it's worth a look because footballs in the late 70s would soak up water like you couldn't believe and getting that curl on it was just unheard of And there, there was a young Martin Tyler doing the commentary in the late seventies. Clock that, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm not, Before I'm, I'm not going to revise the three-two-one there because obviously he only played eighteen games. Ah, so this, this is true. Too. I stick with Curry then Hendo then. Yeah. That's fair enough. But I, I, th I thought for any Sheffield United fans, being reminded as to what a great player he was. But he did start at our place. He did score, you know, what was it? 53 goals in 313 games. Yeah, I'm, re yeah, I'm yeah, reckoning yeah. on today's market, I think we should be asking for about 80 million. Give or take, oh. yeah. For him. Yeah. So, Chad, oh. if, you could, if you could have a look down the back of the sofa and see if there's any spare change, you can rattle and throw it our way. <laughs> oh. oh, I love that. The little oh, dance. Look. Man. This is great. This is taking me back to the 80s. There you go. There you go. Little segues that mean nothing to anybody apart from Watford. Now, in, in the 70s, you see, we had a we had a scoreboard made. In about 78, it was. And whenever we scored a goal, the little dancing men came up. And that means more to Watford fans than, than you can ever know. Why we can't have that. I think it was your idea, Justin, the other week. You know, on the old kind of computerized uh, advertising boards when we score. Yeah. Have a bit of that going on. Yeah, why, 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 why don't you have that? Yeah. Ah, oh, should be done. Should be done. Yeah, should I, be I done. think I said as well on the advertising boards that go around the ground. Yeah. 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 I think that should well, be a thing. So there we go, people. That was our first. He's one of our own, Mr. Tony. Oh, Jeff, oh, there's Kev. Mr. Tony Curry. <laughs> <laughs> there we are. I think I'm winning this battle, I think. I think I also think we're going to be seeing a lot more of Kev, actually. I've got a feeling. Yeah. I've got a feeling he's going I've to pop up. I think, I think where's <laughs> Kev has legs? Oh yeah, well, yeah. It, although, although in fairness, in the image, he doesn't have legs, but <laughs> no. you know what I mean. I think he can run and run. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, there we go. In that case, we get to the shittest part. I know you thought it couldn't get worse, but it's the completely rubbish DNSYE prediction league, which has been shite with bells on the whole way through. We don't know you, but you guys may actually get some results right. But let's face it. That's unlikely um, tomorrow with uh, with West Brom, as we record here. But we turn and look to the weekend when we take on the Blades of Sheffield in their own backyard of Bramble Lane. But we always start with our guest. Chad, what do you think the prediction is going to be? Because you helped start this off. And in fairness, I have got a bone to pick with all three of you. Our first game, when I hadn't set out the rules, you know what happened? All what? three of you, all three of you fuckers went one all. And I was like, oh, for oh. Christ's sake. <laughs> so now you can no longer go the same because that's entirely pointless. Oh, Chad, yeah. you get the first call, sir. I'm going to go 2 0 now. I'm going to go opposite of <laughs> what we did on the prior recording. I'm going to go 2 0. 2 0 Blades. There's confidence there. He thinks his star man, who we've successfully predicted, hopefully, uh, and I might get on the shake this one off. Justin, you're still at top with 15 points. The NFL, uh, the uh, EFL, sorry, NFL. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Um, the EFL is at the bottom with 12. In the middle is Carlos. So, Carlos, you're next on 13 points. What do you predict? 
<sighs> Here we go. I mean, I, yeah, I, I, I don't want to do it to you because I, I, I really yes, did. You did. I, I really did him out of it last time against yes, Westbrook when we recorded, and I feel bad for it. But however, one all, one all. Oh, you bastard! One. <laughs> <laughs> you so, oh, oh dear, yeah. it, it almost feels like your your favourite scoreline has been taken away from you there, Justin. That's, that's a shame. You can't go two nil blades. You can't go one one. Got to be nil nil. What are you going to do? No, we'll uh, go two all. Uh, we are due a win. We haven't had one for so long. It feels like that. We probably have, but it feels like so long. Obviously, we haven't at this point played West Brom yet, so we don't know what that result's going to be. Oh, let's let's do it. Let's go 2-1 Watford. I'm going to hate myself. For well that. done. I can't do 2-1 well Watford. Well done. That's what I like. Do not scratch your eyes. Fantastic. Fantastic. We've got predictions and everything. We've done Tony Curry. Kev may have made an appearance very subtly, but he made none. <laughs> I mm, yeah, okay. Sadly. <laughs> so there we go. Chad, Chad, thank you so much for, uh, for for coming on and talking all things Sheffield United and Blades. Do not scratch your eyes. Thank you very much, Chad, for joining us on our podcast once again. Uh, good luck for the rest of the season, apart from when we play, of course. You know, obviously we'd like to win that one if we can, but uh, it's been a pleasure having you on. Thank you very much. Cheers, Cheers.